This brought Peter with two bits from <clears throat> the word I must get on today. We're in a need to move on. David had in Psalm uh, 25, we've been in the Psalms today for a few minutes, just looking at a few of them and uh, as we go on. And uh, this is the seventh prayer of a distress, a Psalm of David, and he was in distress. And he makes 12 requests to God. And you know God's going to answer all 12 of them. And he's going to answer them. If we'll seek the face of the Lord, he will answer. He said, turn to me. Turn to me. And I will answer you. And one, he said, let me not be ashamed. In verse 2, he said, look unto thee, O Lord, do I lift up my soul. First thing you got to do, you're in trouble, lift up your soul to the Lord God of heaven. Through his son, Jesus Christ. He said, oh my God, I trust in thee. Are you? Do you call yourself a Christian? If you do, if you do call yourself a Christian, you're supposed to trust in the Lord. And you're supposed to not be ashamed. He said, let me not be ashamed. What would make you ashamed? That's if you call yourself a Christian and you ain't acting like one. Then you need to be ashamed. Are you calling yourself a Christian and you go around telling dirty jokes, looking at dirty things, following the dirty way of the world, just uh, involved in everything in the dirty way of the world and not involved in the things of God? then you are a disgrace to God and to your church and to yourself. And he said, Oh my God, I trust in thee. Let me not be ashamed. Let not mine enemies triumph over me. Hey, you will have the world will be your dead level uh, 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 persecutor if you uh, try to live a uh, dual life. You can't live on both sides of the fence. you got to walk straight on one side of the fence or the other. Verse 3, he said, Yea, let none that wait on thee be ashamed. Let them be ashamed which transgress without cause. Wow. He was, J. David was ashamed right here for something and something he had done. And he and, he, and because it, he, uh, his enemies triumphed over him. Over him. And uh, uh, they, they uh, gnashed on him with their teeth. And they said, Hey, man, I thought you were God and man. I thought God was on your side. What's happening over here? Where is your God now? What happened? And David said, Show me thy ways, O Lord. Teach me thy paths. I'm going to tell you, my friend, the only way you're going to see the ways of God and know the paths of God is to get in His Word. You've got to get in the Word of God. And then you've got to heed to it. Heed to it. Ask the Lord to show you. Open your Bible anywhere today. I don't care. Open it in a psalm. Open it in a proverb. Proverbs one of the best place to open up. Uh, where will a young man cleanse his way by taking heed to the Word of God? Open your Bible anywhere and ask God to show you. Ask Him to show you uh, what is for you. If, if you uh, glance at a page and it's not right there, flip over again and find God to show you something. And when He starts showing it to you, you start seeing it. Break down a verse. The, the first thing in a verse, O oh Lord, why stop right there and pause for a minute and, and do a little prayer. Say, Lord, show me your words. Make these words jump off this page so I can see them in my heart, so I can take them to heart. And show me thy ways. Lead me in thy truth, he said, verse 5. Teach me, for thou art God, and the God of my salvation. On thee do I wait all day. Has a man that was waiting on the Lord all day, and he was doing the things of God and he found himself in a, in, a, in a place to where he was having a little trouble and he had a reproach on him he's doing the right thing though he's praying to God and he's talking to God lead me he said remember O Lord thy tender mercies and thy loving kindness for they have been ever of old God has been forever and he has a loving kindness that he pours out on you and I as Christians, Christians, Christ-like. What is a Christian? He's a person that's Christ-like. If you say you're a Christian and you don't go to church, you, you're failing. If you say you're a Christian and you don't tithe, you're failing. If you say you're a Christian and you're not in your Bible, you're failing. And and it's going to come catch up with you one day. And when it catches up with you, you're going to be like David. You're going to get full on. And you're going to not know how to get out. And you're going to pray and beg and cry and pray and beg and cry and cr pray and beg and cry. And then, and, but when you realize that God said, hey, quit doing all that begging 
and all that crying and all that grief and just rest in me that I have forgiven you, that I cast whatever it is you did, I cast it in the sea of forgetfulness, never more to be remembered, and you now are free from all of that which you are beating yourself to death with in your mind. <clears throat> Remember, O oh Lord, your tender mercies. Remember not the sins of my youth, nor my transgressions. I think the guy was probably lying right here. He's saying to God, remember not the sins of my youth. What he really means is remember not the sins I just committed. Remember what has, do, do, forget what just uh, happened that you and I, as an older person, that I did. I did something over here and, and I need you to remember it not. I need you to put it away and my transgressions according to the mercy Remember thou me for thy goodness sake, O Lord. He say, he's saying right there in verse 7, Remember me now for your goodness sake. And God is good. And he is going to remember us. All we have to do is ask him. And look, good and upright is the Lord. Therefore will he teach sinners in the way. Whoa. And here is a man that had been saved by God, but he realized he's still a sinner in the way. But he's, he's got to learn there's two parts to this body. There's a sinful nature in this body. And if we allow it to come ahead of God, we suffer the consequences for it mentally, spiritually, and it can become physical. And so he said the meek will he guide in judgment, and the meek will he teach his way. All the paths of the Lord are mercy and truth under such as keep his covenant and his mercies. Ooh we. If you keep them, you have that mercy. The only way you get out under the mercy of God and get in trouble is to follow the devil for a few minutes. And then you're gonna have to get back and get right. For thy name's sake, O oh Lord, pardon mine iniquities, for it is great. He saw that he had an iniquity that was great. What is an iniquity? The Bible said, regard not iniquity in your heart, I won't hear your prayers. If you regard iniquity in your heart, I won't hear your prayers. What is iniquity? It's a known sin. If God said, it's a sin for you, mister, to live with that woman and not be married, and you continue to do it, it's iniquity, and God won't hear your prayer. He says that to the woman. Woman, if you live with a man, you're not married to him, it's iniquity, and I won't hear your prayers. I don't care, you can come to church, you can beg, you can cry, you can do anything you want until you straighten this situation out. I'm not going to hear you. And if God de deliberately, had God deliberately dealt with me over cigarettes, and, and every time I smoke one, I cut the Lord off. And I cut him off for days and weeks. Uh, and a whole year I fought that battle. And, and God just, I couldn't get any peace. I couldn't get peace in my life because God said, Peter, do not do this anymore. You're saved now and you don't need the things of the world. You're going to walk in my paths now and not the paths of the world. And you've got to clean your body up and clean up your act so that I can use you. And I had to clean it up so he could use me. Oh, I could have continued to smoke, but I wouldn't have been used. And, and I, would have cut off my, I would have cut off that blessing of God that I've had over the years by continuing to do something that was to me iniquity. It may not be to somebody else, but it was to me it was iniquity because he dealt with me on it. It said, What man is he that feareth the Lord? Him shall he teach in the way that he shall go choose. Verse 12. <clears throat> Verse 13 of Psalm 25. Says, his soul shall dwell at ease and his seed shall inherit the earth. Wow. <laughs> hey, that's a beautiful, beautiful, hey, that's beautiful, uh, what he's saying here. And, and he sees this. The secret of the Lord is with them that fear him, and he will show them his covenant. Mine eyes are ever toward the Lord, for he shall pluck my feet out of the net. Here's David. He was stuck in a net. He needed God to pluck his feet out, <clears throat> and he knew the only way to do it was to get on his knees and apologize and say, God, I sinned, and I sinned drastically. I sinned, I sinned a sin of uh, that was iniquity. I knew I wasn't supposed to do it, and I did it. 
And I did it deliberately. Now I need you to deliver me from it. And God was merciful and graceful, and he delivered David from it because he recognized the place he was in. See you next time. By the way, Brother Peter.